Ayo, what is good my people and welcome back to a better late than never ever crosses video. Today we are going to be looking at a guard to get top 100 in the new ranking event and if you enjoy the video and find it helpful please do help a brother out with a subscribe, a like, a comment, whatever you choose. So the score for your ranking event is based on these metrics at the bottom so one hit max damage total damage taken which honestly isn't a big deal because i take quite a lot of damage and still seem to get an s and then your total battle time which you want to keep to around one minute 30 if you can to get a good score so you can use these uh, check your score after the battle and basically use it to improve see where you need to improve and adjust your rank so there are two trials, you can do either one of them and the best score will win. So the first one is against the Vajradara Twins and it's a birth based trial. And it has a physical emphasis for three main reasons. One, because after they do their ability, they are going to drop their defense, physical defense by maximum. So you're going to do tons of physical damage to them. And then also because there's an uh, ally magic attack minus 60% score boost. And then there's um, fog as well, which only affects magic abilities. So it really does have a physical emphasis. And for this trial, Yuffie's new weapon, the Hawkeye, is king. It is made, this trial is made for this weapon. It's a ton of physical earth damage, which is great. And if you combine it with the Razor Ring, which even though it's magical, if you have them both maxed out, it's instant eight, level eight earth potency, and you'll breeze through this trial. So general suggestions are obviously, you know, the Hawkeye Razor Ring combo will do wonders for you. But if you don't have that, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, bringing the Stream Slasher and Stream Saber for the physical attack for all allies can be pretty useful. You can bring both Triangle and X Sigils because each of them, one of them has Triangle, one of them has X. Or you could maybe just bring one Sigil, like Triangle, and then just kill the X guy first, then break the Triangle if you're going for that kind of a strategy or vice versa. You can also bring Healing Essener for Fog if you plan to use some kind of magic abilities like Yuffie's Arctic Star, which is good for this, for the physical attack buff for her and her ally, but it is a magic command ability, so it will be affected by Fog. Other thing you need is an AoE physical defense increase, super important. And then you can bring, you know, if you don't have the earth damage, bring your best physical non-elemental damage, so you could gamble with Yellow Megaphone for the times 3 damage. Amaranth's Claws is great because it's physical um, and it raises Tifa's physical attack. You could try uh, Glare Reed because it gives you that limit break potency. That could be useful, but you can't bring the other best physical weapon for Sephiroth, Dark Heavens, because they resist wind, so that kind of sucks. Other than that, just big hitting non-elemental weapons can do really well, like Ceremonial Sword, Zidane Sword, and Tifa's Guard Gloves. All of these can be really good if you don't want to go the earth route and of course there are tons of different ways to to tackle this there's really no one route answer depends on what you have and which um battle scores you go for basically so yeah as mentioned you can go with sigils you can go you can gnaw sigils you can really go with whatever you want if you don't have the earth you could even go with magic um by not taking the fog and magic attack down scores and maybe work around it that way or just take the uh, fog don't take the magic attack down and then bring essence for fog there's so many different ways to do this um for me i just went with a tried and tested method of just bringing your strongest non-elemental physical weapons for me i went with the non-elemental physical based team so I brought Tifa with Guard Loves and Zack. 270k power. I went with Matt just for the centipede mainly. Um, finally got his new outfit. Quick charging limit break. As I mentioned, centipede is the most important thing to survive their attack, physical defense, extra heals and stat sticks, and for his sub equipment. Huh? I went with a pretty weird setup. Boost heal level 9. Used physical attack level 3 for all allies. Even though I have a 3 star level 50 weapon there, it's fine. Zack, I don't have an attacking outfit for him, so I brought the beach one. OB6 ceremonial sword, 
and stat sticks apocalypse because it's quick charging limit break and then physical attack physical ability potency so 4.6k attack physical attack and then level 7 physical attack level 7 physical ability potency and then i also brought tifa with her physical outfits and her quick charging limit break dolphin blow with god loves ob6 to do as much damage as possible and the motor drive is for more physical attack stat sticks and her sub equipment is also for physical ability potency and some hp so 4.3k on her and then boost hp4 physical attack 7 and again physical ability potency 7. that's pretty much the way i went about it just trying to beat the bosses down as quickly as possible ignoring sigils ignoring everything else so for my battle effects I went for max on everything pretty much except for the enemy physical defense and magic defense where i didn't take anything so that obviously i can burst them super quick everything else is maxed so let's see how i did it went into the fight got off one zangan fist and one ceremonial slice and then used mat to get my party's physical defense up for the, their attack the attack and then after that it's basically just spamming Zack and Tifa's powerful single target abilities and yeah that's about all there is to it the way I went about it is to leave one of them at least on not too much HP kind of leave them both alive in a way until my limit breaks come up and then use Apocalypse to get, try to get my one hit max damage up for the score by hitting two of them. I don't think it makes a big difference because if you hit one it's times two damage, but yeah. And yeah, just burst them before their uh, stream phase ends. Hopefully you have enough power if you are following this method. I got 71.5k for this. And you can take a look at how I got that. I still only got A for one hit max damage, but still a pretty good score. Still top 100. Next up is the water trial, which I did a bit better in. You face the Armored Scorpion here with his two little henchmen, Dorky Face and Deathclaw. So this one has a bit of a magical emphasis because there is that uh, minus 60% physical attack score that you can grab for free if you go full magic team. Other than that, Tifa's bunny gloves and feather gloves are absolute MVPs. This trial was made for these weapons. Bunny gloves with the powerful water damage and it raises her magic attack and has an X sigil. And then the feather gloves, perfect combo, lowers the enemy's magic defense and raises her water damage. So if you have these two at a high level, it's going to be super easy for you to get top 100. General recommendations though are you can also bring the boost magic attack uh, weapons for all allies, kind of like the physical one. You can bring something like green megaphone to do magical water damage and lower their water resistance or noble collar to do AOE water damage. You can bring an X sigil if you are planning on breaking the stream phase. Um, increasing your magic attack can be good, so crystal cross, micro laser and lowering the enemy's magic defense can also be useful. So that's like arc sword, kaiser gloves. Canyon Collar is nice because one of the enemies are weak to wind and it lowers M defense. Stingray and then AoE um, magic defense can also be useful with Core Defender because Core Defender is good and also has a high magic attack stat. That is just general stuff. Hopefully one of these things can help you out in your run. As for my team, I went with Separat Tifa and Ketchi, 334k. Ketchi with the green megaphone for water damage and lowering water resistance. I also went to this toy box because it's quick charging and it lowers the defense of the enemies. And flower vase for magic attack, magic ability potency and 
magic attack buff with haste or is useful. Then he has a cure and error, and that doesn't actually matter. Sub equipment is HP, water potency, magic ability potency. He's got 8k, 4k. Taking a look at sub equipment, it's M attack 7, water potency 5, and mag ability 4. And then I went with Sephiroth. He's not helping with water, but it's just strong magic DPS, which is pretty good here. I went with his ice setup. Edged Wings is great for Exigil and Protector's Blade for the M attack for all allies. He also has an Aurora. He's got Shiva and Stat Sticks, and then the X Sigil, X Ruin. And then here I went with Ice Potency and Magic Attack for all allies again. You can see he's got 4.3k magic, only 6k HP, doesn't matter. And then for our abilities, M attack 7, R7, and yeah. M attack for all allies level 4. And then finally, my sort of main DPS is Tifa with her Water Blade Arcanum bunny outfit. Then I got bunny gloves for water magic and magic attack buff, and the X Sigil. I don't have the Feather Gloves, but I went with Power Soul for the extra magic ability potency. She has Leviathan level 6, Aurora, Stat Sticks, and an X Ruin. So I went with two X Ruins with Sigil Boosts. And then Magic Attack and Water Potency. So 4k. And our abilities. That's pretty much how I rolled with this. For me, with the battle effects, I once again took everything that you can take. So max level of physical defense, magical defense, max level of attack down, HP reduction, physical attack, all of that stuff. Also went with max level of sigils, but I could still break the sigils because the only thing I didn't take was one level of the command gauge full rate. So you can see if I went with 70%, I would have had 550%, but I went with 30% to get 530%. And that is super important for me because of this. I get more physical da magical damage, sorry, and I get the matching sigil destruction plus two. If you go with 70%, you're probably never going to get to, you know, max attack stats. So this is how I go about it. I actually kill the adds first. Starting with the Death Claw, just because he's annoying and does a bunch of damage. But you definitely, or for my run, I definitely want to take out the Dorky face as well. Because, as you can see on Ketchi now, he's been massively debuffed, physical and magical. And if that thing gets Innovating Breath off, then my whole party is going to have that debuff and that's kind of going to suck. So, we kill him off as fast as possible with Aurora. And then we wait for the stream phase of the Scorpion. I dropped Tory Box here because it lowers his defenses and it's going to be up by the time my Leviathan is up. So yeah. Pretty chill, pretty chill. Protector's Blow was a mistake, but it doesn't matter. Since my attack stance is maxed, I can still break these uh, sigils. And then once the stream phase is broken, it's basically just a matter of spamming my DPS with Tifa and Sephiroth. And then spamming my water resist down, making sure it stays at uh, three levels debuff with Ketchy and in between using the haste buff. So here, keeping his water resistance down. And then once all my limit breaks are charged, I just pop them to finish the fight. Toy Box is nice because his water resistance is already down by three levels, and now his magic defense will also be down by two levels. And then Shiva and Leviathan can just pop him. And Leviathan helps for my one hit max damage. And that's it. Um, 72759. And that is more than enough for top 100 in my group. Now you can take a look at my scores, see how I did it. 
And yeah, I got rank 56 in a group where the number one player has 82,000. So not bad. And that is pretty much it. Hopefully this helps. Thanks again for watching as always. And if you like it, if you find it helpful, for a brother, a subscribe. See ya.